one lap remains in the clash of 82. Bobby Allison, the leader of the Alabama gang, takes the lead fight. Fun, it stays right there in second. Labonte is in third. Waltrip is in fourth. Back to go to turn number one. How about it, Richard? Well, I'll tell you, it's going to be real interesting about halfway down the back stretch. And it's, right now, it's still anybody's race. So the first three, it's going to be hard for the four on back to even come up to the front. Real interesting it will be. This is the final lap. $50,000 at stake to win it down to the inside. Here comes Bonnet. Bonnet moving in. He can make it. Uh, the body's in a good position right now. The top, right the top there. row's the way to go. And number 11, Waltrip gets down on the inside. He may cut even across the grass. We see it pull maneuvers like that. Down they come for the finish. Here comes Waltrip. Look at him come up the inside. He hits Bonnet at the line. Car number 88, Bobby Allison has won the clash. Buddy Baker is in first. Darrell Waltrip has battled his way to second. Joe Rutman of Upland, California, who carries one of our CBS cameras on Sunday. Third, Dale Earnhardt in the Ford is in fourth. In fifth is Kyle Petty. In sixth is Harry Gant. Seventh is Neil Bonnet. Eighth is Ricky Rudd. Ninth, Elliot Forbes Robinson. Tenth is Bill Elliott. And eleventh is Ron Bouchard, the victim of that wild slide but still miraculously picking the car up and coming across 11th. 12th is number 98, Morgan Shepard. And 13th is Mark Martin, the driver out of New Albany, Indiana, who's off to his rookie year with a very fine performance in this 125-mile qualifier. 14th is Bobby Wolock. 15th is Ty Scott. And these are unofficial standings now. 16th, just outside, is Tim Richmond. And also outside the bail is car number 31, Billy Harvey, a Florida driver. So the final standings up in front will show Baker, Waltrip, Rutman, Earnhardt, and Kyle Petty as the top five as the checkers are dropped on the field by Harold Kinder under a rainy condition here at Daytona Beach. Looking for his second win. Comes into the tri-oval. White flag is out. This is it. Final lap. In second place now is car number 27, Taylor Yarborough. Quick word from Larry Newer. Newer, you said you might be a little concerned about this last lap. Bobby has not been drafting. Right. It consumes a lot more fuel now to run in the draft. We just got him hooked up with the 47 car. Ten laps to go, but I think we got it now. Well, less than a half ago, Ken. How's he doing? Looking good. He's pulling up on car number two, trying to put the Rutland car a lap down in the final moments. Here it comes. A sprint to the finish. Allison coming down. And he's right behind Rutland as they come to the line. Down the checkered flag about to come out. And sprinting to it is number 88. Bobby Allison has won the Daytona 500 for the second time in his career. Well, again, here is a rundown on the competitors. Oh, and Joe Rutman is spinning. The leader is spinning and hitting the wall here on the main straightaway. The leader, Joe Rutman, has crashed on the main straightaway and is spinning just below us, just across the cross of the start-finish line. So a tremendous development here with 244 laps complete. Apparently, Larry, I would think something broke on that car. Rutman lost control coming out of turn four and hit the wall of the main straightaway. Very definite development here. What's going on? The yellow had come out because of the Rutman accident and the leaders pitted. While they were in the pits, the rain started to come down and it's all going to depend upon who did not pit and who stayed out there as to who the leader at this point is. And God forbid, should we stop this race at this point, it's going to determine the leader, the winner of the race. I'm going to reconfirm it's Richard Petty. Richard Petty is up front. And Dave Marcus in the 19 and the number 71, Stacey Chevy, could be in the lead at this point. Or it could be Richard Petty or it could be several other drivers. We still don't know at this point. But what a development for Joe Rutman, who was leading this event, coming down the main straightaway. Now, here's the, the confusion. Uh, 71, Marcus is shown as the leader on one of the scoreboards here, the electronic scoreboard back of the uh, backstretch, but in the infield, 
Richard Petty, and the number 43 is shown as the leader. So we don't know at this point, but timing and scoring will get it sorted out for us. As they move up on the slower under the caution and Daryl Waltrip will be the winner. The field is being given the white flag right now. Terry Labonte staying out there a tremendous disappointment for this young man who has driven a tremendous race here this afternoon but uh, had problems with three laps to go. Daryl Waltrip behind the pace car going at about 40 miles an hour comes off of the fourth turn and receives the checkered flag from Harold Kinder and Daryl Waltrip has won the Northwestern Bank 400 from North Wilkesboro. The crowd has been on its feet for several laps, each individual rooting for his particular driver. We are on the final lap of the Winston 500. They're in the second turn, headed for the backstretch. Benny Parsons goes to the inside of the racetrack. Daryl Waltrip moves to the outside of him. Terry Labonte tucked right in behind Daryl Waltrip. Now the car's down the 4,000-foot backstretch into the 33-degree banking of turn number three. Daryl Waltrip has moved in the lead. Terry Labonte has moved into second position with Benny Parsons riding right beside him. Kyle Petty in fourth. Here they come off of the fourth turn. On Parsons two. is frozen. He can't move. Onto the trial and this is going to be the checkered flag. Here comes Daryl Waltrip. The body tried to make a move, but he cannot do it. Daryl Waltrip wins the Winston 500. Terry Labonte finishing in second position. Benny Parsons was third, and Kyle Petty was fourth. He's going to take a look on the inside. White flag. He's got to do it now. Less than a lap to go of the 400 that they started this long, grueling crusade. Here goes Elliott trying the outside line down the back stretch. Nothing there. Tucks in behind Neil Bonnet. Three and four will decide the issue. $450,000 on the line. Elliott looks to the inside. Slips up on the outside. He'll try the long way around. They're off turn four. They're coming to the checkered flag. And Neil Bonnet will win the World 600. Well, I know they got their money's worth. I've been sitting here watching them. They've been hooping and hollering and yelling, and they've got a very, very good crowd. And uh, 
and uh, they stayed out here in it. They're going to see the finish of the race right here. Harold Kinder's going to show them a checkered flag, and Bobby Allison has won something that he's been wanting to do a long time and has not had a chance to. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm glad I was a part of it. And I believe all the fans believe that they, was, that, that they were glad they was a part of it. Checkered flag falls on Bobby Allison, his 68th career victory, and it came at virtual walking speed here as the Vanskoy 500 finishes under a yellow flag in heavy rain, the kind of rain that has marked this entire racing weekend here in the Pocono Mountains. But despite the showers, it's been another great stock car battle. A classic example of Winston Cup competition. This one has fallen to Bobby Allison. We was, it was 1981. No, I believe it must have been 1982. I was driving Junior's car. And How do you he, fellas remember all these dates? I don't understand that either. <laughs> well, I see. It could have been 81 or 82. <laughs> okay. That's right after I started driving for Junior. Of course, he had been driving for Junior. And come down, wouldn't you know, come down to the end of the race. It, it must have been 81. Come down to the end of the race, who I got to beat him? You know, and of course, they're on the radio, all of them telling me, don't let that little guy beat you, you know. And I'm, man, I don't want him to beat me worse than they don't want me to beat him. He's got a camera in his car, so I mean, there ain't no excuse for this not being on record, but I, it didn't. It should have been, but it didn't. But we come down, we get the white flag, and I'm leading, and I think I think I got him where I want him, you know. He, he obviously thinks he's got me where he wants me, but we come off a of turn two, and I went in one too hard a little bit, and I got pushed up a little bit, and he got up alongside of me. And we're coming down the back straightaway, and he eases in alongside of me about halfway down the back straightaway. Got a camera in his car, right? Yeah. You'd think if he run into me or he's going to do anything, you'd see it on the camera, right? Well, they turn the camera. He's going by this way. Instead of turning the camera over here to where they can see me, they turn it around this way. Well, he must have known that. <laughs> <laughs> Because while they were turning it around this way, he hit me. <laughs> I didn't know he controlled them things in my car. We go in the third turn, and he bounces off of me like that right there and makes me go up high, and then he gets on by. Oh, man, well, I'm, man, I'm hot. Boy, I am livid. And I'm driving for everything I'm worth now trying to catch him back. But I, he gets through the corner hit of me. He takes the checkered flag. But when we're coming down to get the checkered flag, he's shaking his fist at me. I mean, he's going to win the race, right? Yeah. He done run into me and knocked me out of the way, <laughs> and he's shaking his fist at me. Well, well you I, didn't know I was just waving. Oh at man, you. boy, you won't wave at me. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell him what you was waving. At me. <laughs> coming out. This is it. Coming down out of turn number four. The white flag is extended. Waltrip is in front. Baker is in second. And here comes Cale Yarborough on the outside. Yarborough beginning to roll. Remember those great Talladega finishes time after time. Remember the very first race, 1969. It was about three feet that decided it. They switch and slide, moving for spots. Terry Labonte stays right in the middle. Yarborough almost touches him. Get side by side, two automobiles. Baker and Waltrip get a little bit of breathing room. Petty goes into third spot. Here they come. Last time to three and four. Baker in that second spot. Waltrip in the lead. Can he stay there? Down they come. Crowd is up. 92,000 
Strong charging toward the finish line. Waltrip is there. Here comes Baker's move. They're 600 feet away from the line. Baker goes to the inside. Waltrip has won it. Darrell Waltrip has pulled it off. He becomes the first man in history to win the Talladega 500 twice. Thank you magnificent strategy he stuck it out there he refused to give any ground baker gave him his best shot but it was darrell waltrip's day the photo finish the nascar now uses was employed a year ago for this event and the photo finish camera is ready again at michigan international speedway to capture the close of this race richard petty and bobby allison are now nose to tail on the racetrack richard petty looking for a way around moves to the high side of the racetrack now the cars sweep off of turn number two they enter the back stretch for the final time at michigan international in the champions park like for and bobby allison moves to the inside and richard petty to the outside i thought that allison was slowing but he was only getting out of the draft it's bobby allison and richard petty fighting side by side and nose to tail through turns three and four petty lagging back just a little bit Let's watch the move that Richard Petty makes off the trial, into the trial, off the fourth turn. His car wiggles a little bit. It's going to be Bobby Allison winning the Champions Park Club 400. But it's almost a side-by-side -side finish with Richard Petty. Another great finish in Grand National Winston Cup Racing. Then it was Allison's number 88 and Waltrip's number 11, head to head. But on the final pit stop, Allison pushes too hard and spins coming off pit road. That costly error was all that Waltrip needed to log his 12th victory of the 1982 season. Allison is ahead of Gant and Waltrip by well under a second. Waltrip pulls back a little bit from Gant as the white flag unfurls. The Bobby Allison fans are going crazy in the grandstand and all over this race facility. Bobby Allison appears on his way to victory. He has one half lap to go now and about a 12 car length advantage on Harry Gant running in second position. Gant with about a three car length lead on Darrell Waltrip. Here is the leader of the race, Bobby Allison in the number 88 Gatorade Dygard Chevrolet off of the fourth turn. Bobby Allison wins Atlanta. 